I wanted to make this footage available that was part of my presentation at the International Association for Somatic Educators that took place in Cambridge, Massachusetts five or six years ago. And the my presentation had to do with my discussion and showing my theory of three anatomies. And what I mean by three anatomies, I'm saying that tissue organization will determine the flow of information that is occurring within a living system. And I realize that when I am using language to describe movement, that movement is its own language and that we interpret it through the lens of our values and our experience, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things that's been important to me is to see how we become self-limiting. And we become self-limiting through various limitations and uh, enchainments that we support through our uh, just acceptance of how things are. In the discussion of the three anatomies, and again, I am using language to discuss something that doesn't have a language, and I am interpreting it through the lens of my awareness. I designated the primordial anatomy, which is fundamentally fluid moving through tissue. The cultural anatomy I would define as immediate to circumstance. And the cosmic anatomy is, the, uh, is about space. And what we're seeing here is my demonstration of a movement that goes on for 12 minutes and 40 seconds. Now what it is, is that I am leaning on a roller that's part of a piece of equipment that we use in our studio. And I am showing, first of all, that I can maintain a movement for 12 minutes and 40 seconds on the same arm, doing a, a series of movements without any strain, exertion of energy, without any effort on my part at all. And the I left the time code on so that we can track how long I was able to maintain this, again, without uh, exerting any effort, etc. So there, there are really important things in this. Um, and I, again, I'm using language to describe circumstance according to the lens of my ability to interpret. I don't think that I would have arrived at certain insights if I did not work with people who had been compromised neuromuscularly, such as paralysis or other forms of stasis, which allowed me to explore fluid resonance in a way that was not conventional. The thing that I had been exploring was that the resonance stream of fluid is pre-nervous system. And so the, in other words, that our, the organism is a fluid interpenetrating wave entity that becomes circumscribed in a particular time space condition for a purpose that we don't actually know. So I'm basically saying that biosystems are functioning through fluid, resonant, wave, spiral, and pulsation. 
So my, my concern with working with spinal cord injury was to see what would happen when we returned to the primordial anatomy, to an earlier phase that was not bound by the nervous system. And so I was able to achieve restorative capabilities in many circumstances of spinal cord injury and it is true I will say that each situation is really different in terms of how people are um, w what is actually going on in any uh, event but there is no question that the capacity for restorative abilities lies in the scope of how it is that we are able to have a variety of engagements within our system. The, what you're seeing now is what I had called the cosmic anatomy and it is like watching paint dry when you watch something that is moving so slowly and again without effort. So w one of the things that is interesting to me in terms of again if I hadn't worked with compromise I would never have arrived at this, what I saw with most people who were compromised what the, was the amount of effort it took to get from point A to point B. See, here when I'm suspending, there's absolutely no effort whatsoever. And so I can just go on and on. And the truth is that the person who is filmmaking at this point got tired holding the camera. And so that's when we stopped. What I was interested in uh, with uh, people who were paralyzed was the, and I see paralysis as a concentration of mass, meaning that the fluid molecules are so jammed together there, that there is, no, there is no resonance stream at all. And so in the, in the uh, bringing about more engagement with the primordial anatomy, the, the person's mass began to change, mass and density began to change, and there was an ease of movement that was available that never could have been achieved. It just took too much exertion within the compression uh, that made it extremely difficult to transfer to do anything. And so we began to see where a person who was paraplegic be able to crawl, to be able to do all kinds of things without exerting any effort. I think that what's important here is that in the, in the capacity of being able to have more space within tissue, so rather than seeing a lot of undulation in the tissue, we're seeing a lot of space. And that space is engaging with gravity in a kind of ease as if you were underwater, but you're not. And so what it allows is a, again, a scope of capability within my system. In, in continuum, we are always aware that closed systems deteriorate. And what does that mean? It means that there, there is no flow of information that is circulating through that system. And whether it's paralysis or whether it's a, a, some kind of emotional repression or whatever it may be, there is just no question that closed systems deteriorate. As a dancer, and by the way, I'm in my mid-70s uh, during this uh, demonstration here, and so, the level of uh, flexibility in my system and openness, et cetera, et cetera, is really not that usual with people of my age. I have no aches and pains. I have no inflammation. I have none of the things, no joint problems, none of the things that you would associate with um, somebody my age. The ability to maintain here, again, right here, the, be, the ability to maintain without efforting, that I'm being supported by a larger capability so that my own energy is not being used to uh, engage in physical activity. And when I say my own energy, there's no change in heart rate, there's no change in any, any of the usual components that would um, 
that would uh, indicate uh, a, some kind of arousal in the system and some kind of engagement. My system is basically at rest and yet it is moving. So that is quite extraordinary. Now, in researching some of the implications of why is it that I am able to do this for such a long period of time uh, and, and not have to get exhausted, I have to say that the information available to us uh, in, in movement orientations that are not so orthodox I had to go to Dr. Google. I kid around when I call it Dr. Google. But anyway, I was looking up slow twitch type 1 muscle fiber. And what it had said, and now we're moving much more slowly than that, so it's not really within that spectrum, but it's sort of around there. It spoke about a, an abundance of mitochondria, increased cellular respiration, no fatigue. Wow. Well, if that's the case, then my system is able to enter into a nutritive capability that otherwise I might not access. And the other thing that's important here is you can see that my attention, I'm able to maintain attention for a very long period of time. So the, the capacity to be present without inflicting an immediate result changes the way that we engage in the world. I'm not just speaking of it as a physical dexterity at this point, but how we engage in relationship of being able to be present with someone without having to press, push, and I'm speaking about this energetically without any kind of force, but just an openness of engagement, which frees the person or people that you're with in terms of opening up in a way that they never could if they sense any pressure from you. So the issue of this kind of movement as it expands into our social engagement and hopefully further than that in, in, into our how we structure government uh, engagements, etc., etc., how we move is how we think. And how we move is how our brain is functioning at any given time. So when we're looking at diversity of movement, we're also looking at neuroplasticity. And so the ability to maintain a, a wide lens of attention that is completely absorbing reveals elements of, of, um, of creative potential that we just never thought possible. So in the world that we have now of electronics and cell phones and iPads and a kind of world of existential distractedness, this is the opposite of what we are seeing so much of within our world. So I hope you enjoyed looking at this because I certainly enjoyed doing it. So thank you.